Hey everybody, welcome back. And we are going to start our AP World History course with a slight introduction into Unit 1, which is named the Global Tapestry, and it's from the time period 1200 to 1450. Now, this is just a brief introduction, and we're going to go into a lot more detail about this uh, by topic point, and we'll talk about that a little bit here. Now, the reason why we have this unit is back in 2019, when the uh, College Board decided to change the world history curriculum going from 8,000 to present day to uh, 1,200 to present day, um, they had made a major shift in, in the way that we present world history. And many of the uh, AP world teachers, including myself, weren't a big fan of that uh, because originally they had planned to set it for at the, starting at the time period 1450. And we felt that this gave a false narrative of world history that world history in its true sense didn't start until the Europeans became to, come, be, became to power. So the reason why we have this is so that it establishes here's what the world looked like before the Europeans rise to power more so, um, and that uh, there are a lot of other civilizations that are play a major role in formulating what becomes the modern world. So that's a big reason why we have this unit to begin with. It is broken down by regional developments. And, and so we will talk about different regions of the world, what's going on in those regions in the, at this time, and uh, kind of establish that baseline of like, here's where history uh, is going on at this time, right before um, we start to go into modern history um, post 1450, all right? Now, this unit itself is only going to be about 8 to 10% of the AP exam. Um, and most of those questions and all those questions will be seen in some sort of multiple choice format if we are doing a typical AP exam this year. Um, it's very unlikely that you will see a written question, maybe an SAQ, a short answer question, but the essay questions most likely will not be about content that relates to this unit. However, it is important to note that the content of this unit can be always be used in some fashion essay, particularly context, where if you talk about what is going on in history up to the moment where your essay is going to be, some of the stuff that we talk about here really kind of sets that baseline of what's going on. So pay attention to the important content because a lot of things that we establish in this unit will be continuities and, and, and changes. Well, there'll be changes and continuities going forward. Um, you can also use comparisons, uh, cause and effect uh, from this time period into others, okay? So this is a little graphic put together by a AP World teacher known as Ben Freeman. I use them quite often in all of my PowerPoints and uh, in other materials for my classroom. Um, but this is a basic rundown, a graphic organizer of the entirety of the global tapestry. And so we will kind of break down to units as it says here. So what those units look like are those topic points. Uh, and I will have a lecture video for each one of these. Uh, in topic 1.1, it's developments in East Asia. That's what we're gonna start with. Then we're gonna move to the Middle East with Dar al-Islam, which is a way of saying all of Islam, which is, extends to North Africa, um, Spain, uh, all the way to India and Southeast Asia as well. Um, the next one is developers in South and Southeast Asia. Um, then we move into the Americas and we uh, hit up Africa. And the last one we hit is Europe. So we just go region to region, what's going on in each one of these during this time period. Okay. Um, now, as we're going through each one of these um, topic points, and I'm very, no, nope, can't make myself small. Okay. It, something that I've done for my PowerPoints and for the lectures is to help you better understand things you should be worry, uh, aware of and what's going on with those and how I've written them is that anytime you see any of the writing in red, that it's been in red writing, that is language that is directly from the college board's curriculum. So I've essentially taken, here's the college board standard, and then we'll dive deeper into them, of course. But then anything that's read is ex specifically from the College Board curriculum, meaning that's exactly what they are expecting you to do as a student to be able to do these things, show how things continue, how things change, causes, other things that uh, the College Board expects you to do and the, the contents that they are looking at you to master. So the illustrative examples, um, the examples they give us, they'll be in there and the standards for the understanding, what you need to know. Anything that's bold is a key term you should know and should be able to memorize as such. 
Uh, I will be creating a Quizlet for each one of these topics where you'll have these bold uh, or these key terms in there with a brief definition of what they are. You should know them and you should memorize them and you should put them in your long-term memory banks because you will, could potentially use them at some point uh, in the course of the year. The next one is the underlying ones. These are cue words, clue words, um, you know, what exactly the College Board is asking you to do, okay? And typically they are asking you to show some sort of historical thinking skill, okay? Show the changes, the continuities, um, the causes, the effects, um, the comparisons and contrasts uh, to different uh, places and people and times and so forth. So I underline those words. So every time we come across those, that language of the College Board, here's what they're expecting you to know. They need to, you need to be able to show how some things continued and how some things changed and so on forth, okay? So, um, every unit usually has a focus skill involved with it. For this unit, it's gonna be comparison. And as we go through the each one of these topics, uh, I want you to think about comparing each to the other. Um, how does the political systems of East Asia compare to the political systems of the Americas? How does the economic systems of the uh, Middle East compare to that of Africa? So those are things that you want to be constantly aware of and keeping eye, an eye out for uh, when you are going through each one of these, because at the end of this unit, I guarantee you, you will have something, an assignment, an essay, test questions that will focus on this particular skill. It won't be the only one, but the main focus you should take away with is being able to compare. And so that's something you should be aware of. And that is a brief introduction to unit one.